Hey, hello there. Today's post is going to be a plague post, just a warning. I want to talk to, to people about furnace filters. Um, in particular, homeowners, like many Canadians are, with forced air furnace systems, heating and cooling systems. If you refer to these units as HVAC units, like I do, then quite likely everything I want to talk about you already know, and the practices I'm going to recommend you already do are practicing. If on the other hand, when I mentioned furnace filter, you just kind of got a blank look on your face, I really want to talk to you. But I want to take it back home to the studio because I want to present some hard numbers with this one. Here in this day and age of the plague, it, more important than ever before, your furnace filter. We're going to talk about that in a minute. I'll join you back home in the studio. Okay then. Here we are back at RPOS Studios and we're going to talk about furnace filters. Before we get started, there's two groups of people that I'd particularly like to make an ask of today. If when I said furnace filters, your first thought was, my furnace has a filter? Or if you can't remember the last time you changed your furnace filter, then here's what I'd like you to do. Immediately when we're done with this informative little video, I'd like you to click on, the, click on the link above, go to my YouTube channel, and subscribe to my channel. In addition to doing that, immediately when we're done, I would like you to utilize the knowledge I'm going to share with you, procure a well-chosen filter of your choice and change your furnace filter today. Let's get on with the talk. Furnace filters, for those who don't know, they come rated with a MERV rating. Now there are filters on the market that are unrated. I would say this about those filters to you. Understand that 100% of the air in your home goes through this device. Are you sure that the money saved using unrated materials is worth it to you? So once we understand that we're looking for filters with a MERV rating, what kind of MERV rating would we like? So I don't recommend and do not use myself anything below a MERV 11. And a MERV 11 filter will get rid of dust and pollen and dust mite, debris and mold spurs, pet dander, smoke, smog and bacteria. The bacteria is uh, a no-brainer, don't you think? We, we obviously don't want to be circulating that around. In addition, now new, just in the last couple of years, at the MERV 11 rating, there are several options for buying carbon impregnated filters. A very good choice in the winter time when you have you know large pets like six cats or something like that because it, it carbon has a, an awesome ability to remove odors from the air so that would that should be the minimum now before we move on to to further discussion let's talk to renters if you rent a home that uses forced air circulation I hope you understand that maintaining the filter for those devices is your accountability, not the landlord's. And almost certainly when you moved in, the landlord will have ha uh, put in a new filter, but it will be a MERV 7 perhaps or a MERV 5 type filter. Not necessarily what you would want to trust your lungs and your family to. Again. 100% of the air going through this filtration device is going into your lungs and your children's lungs. That's why this is an important decision. So I, I've been happy with MERV 11 filters for a long time. They've been available for a long time, but lately filters have been improving. The first big improvement that, that I absorbed was a MERV 12, right, which, you know, it's fairly, fairly obvious what you're gaining there, particles that can carry viruses. Viruses are teeny, teeny, teeny little things, as we've probably got the feel for during these plague months. And 
suddenly I have a great interest in being able to to uh, filter the viral population of my home. I'm relatively certain the majority of people listening will have. So in MERV 12, you gain the ability to extract viruses from your airstream. Now again, I want to repeat so that people understand you're not actually filtering the viruses themselves out. That would be an exceedingly difficult task for any kind of air filtration device. What you are filtering out is the tiny little moisture particles that viruses spread on. And this includes even airborne viruses. So, you know, that's what we're facing right now, an airborne viral plague. Science fiction writers used to write about this all the time. Thankfully, to this point, things haven't been quite as dire as most of those writers predicted. So there's a new filter on the market that I've recently upgraded to that, that goes to a MERV-13 or a MERV-14. This takes you down a whole nether particle side, below the particle size that, that virus live on, to a particle size that carries odor. So this is an alternative to a MERV-11 carbon impregnated filter. Now my experience with this, I use MERV-13 filters in my home. They don't have as great of an odor removing capacity as a MERV-11 carbon impregnated filter but the, they have a, a very high efficiency. The ones I'm using are rated at 96% for particles, uh, three, three microns and below. That is an extraordinarily good rating for a, a simple home HVAC filter. So in the past, people that talk to you about changing filters probably talk to you about, you know, the money it saves you by keeping a clean filter. And I'm gonna add that in here now because I'm asking you to go out and upgrade your filter. I'm admitting that the filters I'm recommending do cost more, but I am reminding you that this device processes 100% of the air in your home. 100% of the air building your children's and your grandchildren's lungs when they sleep and when you sleep. So it's a good idea to make good choices. For those of you who honestly can't remember when the last time you changed your filter, I hope, I hope that this is changing how you think about that. So the next thing that I want everybody to do is create a schedule. And those who follow my LinkedIn, LinkedIn posts will uh, probably be smiling at this point because schedule is a fairly big topic for me in that publishing stream. Set a schedule. None of these filters that are worth anything at all really have a lifespan beyond three months. So for the wife and I and, and one dog, most of the time I'm getting about three months. In the summertime, I think I probably only let it run six weeks or so. There's a lot higher load on my filter in the summertime when the air conditioner is running and the pollen's thick in the air. You shouldn't count on getting three months. If you've got two or three kids, a couple of cats, and a couple of dogs, and you're getting even eight weeks out of your filters, that's that's good service. You, sh you should probably change that out. You want to write this on your fridge or something. You don't ever again want to be in a situation where somebody like me is bringing this up and you're thinking to yourself, Gene, when did I change that filter? That shouldn't happen. This is this has always been too important to your budget in terms of what you're paying for your utilities. But here and now in the age of the airborne viral plague, I, I think you want to take quite a lot more care with the air that you're breathing in your home. Your home is your sanctuary. We're spending more home, more time in our homes than we've ever spent. You know, short of where I started this video out in the woods, where the air quality is, you know, quite a lot better when you're by yourself with your dog in the woods, your home is where you spend a lot of time. And your home is where your children spend a lot of time. Maybe your parents spend a lot of time in your home too. So everybody, let's, uh, let's procure filters. Let's build ourselves a filter changing schedule. And let's start 
fighting this viral plague right in our home with the processing equipment we already have available. You know, for 20 bucks, you can right now today massively upgrade the health of your home. Thanks for watching.